Susan Sarandon has been many things in her movies, but this time you are the high priestess of a very interesting church. What is it? The Church of Baseball. Great opening monologue mm -hmm. from you. Yeah. Boy, does that set the tone. He wrote me good stuff. Yeah. Really good stuff. And you say it in an accent that I guess you claim makes more things permissible than <laughs> otherwise. Could you explain? Well, a southern accent, you can get away with a certain amount of uh, <laughs> frills and, and storytelling. They're kind of like the Irish in that they have a real gift for for making things as complicated as possible and, and fun-loving. And I think that if you said some of these things straight, you couldn't get away with it. But with a southern accent, you can. It's like uh, Tennessee Williams or you know any of these eccentric women. Now, your center of power, the parlor in your house, it's like an altar, I guess. Is there a rite of passage, an initiation of some kind that goes on in there as if I didn't know? Well, uh, if I choose you to be one of the, <laughs> the, 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 the hot contenders for the season, you'd probably find out. I mean, it's an altar. They didn't show it. I can't remember because I've only seen the film once, but um, they didn't show it as often as we photographed it. What happens in the movie is that I keep adding things to it as the movie progresses. I don't know how many times it was it was in, but um, it's, it's more Annie's rites of passage, I think. Well, I know you love the part, and you have been quoted as saying, how could anyone turn down a part where you tie a man to a bed and then read him Walt Whitman all night? Mm -hmm. What does this tell us about Annie? That you don't you don't judge her by other people's standards and that she's surprising and eccentric and uh, fun-loving and she likes Walt Whitman. <laughs> <laughs> the references to Whitman, Sontag, all the way through really throw a curve at us, I guess. We're mm. not quite sure what to make of this off-angled view of baseball and life. This must have been uh, really something to read initially. Have you talked to Ron yet? I uh, just got out. Well, there. see, that's what I mean. He's... he's uh, I certainly had a, a more limited, uh, rather sexist or prejudiced view of jocks before I did this movie. I mean, he's a poet. He was a baseball player for years, you know. I what? guess it's the same kind of misconception you can have about actresses or about somebody who's pretty. Which is to say, what were you expecting around the game? Well, I don't know if I players? expected anything, but I certainly didn't expect a poet. I mean, I, I expected a lot of tit and ass talk and things like that. I'm not saying spitting, a lot of stuff that was there, too. <laughs> I got a lot of what I expected, but I got a lot more. Scratching the crotches, that kind of stuff, is that what you mean? We see well, so I'm much of that Well, I'm glad you said TV it and not right me, now. but yeah, I suppose you could say that, yeah. <laughs> you well, know, guys kind of stuff, you know, hitting of the ass and all that kind well, of Karen. What about the game itself? You've called it a sort of slow motion chess game. A living chess game. Yeah. yeah. What? Well, it's it's a thinking sport. It's very ritualistic and I like it because it's also not a contact sport and yet it's dangerous. I mean, it's slow, but when you understand the possibilities, I mean, Kevin and Ron and I were talking about how you, they're so good now at pitching, for instance, that you have to psych out what you think is going to happen before it happens that you can't possibly judge it so it becomes and they try to psych each other out there's a whole mind kind of game playing that goes on that's pretty interesting can you help me strike a contrast between work on witches and then on this because the two seem to represent polar opposites in the career of an actress for example complex production situation and a relatively harmonious situation in this picture as i understand it well you pretty much summed it up i it? mean uh uh, and which is there really wasn't a part. I, I did anything I could to try to flush that out, but there was, it was kind of a one-joke part that needed development. This was a real character with thought and, and uh, respect, and also there was a, uh, certainly the attitude towards the actors was different. But wherever you are, we remember you. You stand out in some relief from things. Is that good or bad for an actress? Oh, you know it's true. Well, I, I would love to think that. I mm -hmm. don't know. I think it's good for me. Is that ever a drawback for an actress? Well, that, how could it be a drawback? That inevitably she maybe stands out from the ensemble. Oh, stands out from the ensemble. Oh, I don't think I stand out from the ensemble. I mean, I'm the only girl, so that helps. <laughs> That's true enough. But uh, uh, I, I think one of the beauties of the film is that it's very balanced and everybody really does their job and that they hand over the moment to the other actor when it's his moment. And there wasn't a lot of competition. I mean, it was, you know, a team effort. Meanwhile, I've never met a high priestess before. Thank Pleased you. to meet you. There are a lot of us out there. You just look around. She's Susan Sarandon, and we're talking about Bull Durham here in Los Angeles. For KCTV 5, I'm John Tibbetts.